Hey guys, how's it going? And welcome to another tutorial on Fourier series. In this tutorial, I'll be doing an example where we find the Fourier series representing a function f of x equals x over the range 0 to 2 pi. And also we will be sketching its graph from x equals minus 4 pi to x equals 4 pi. So the function f of x looks something like this, what we have over here. So we have a linear function here defined from 0 to 2 pi and it's simply x. And we need to find the Fourier series representing this function. And in the last two videos or tutorials, I've shown you guys that the Fourier series is given using the following equation that you can see on your screen right here where the Fourier coefficients a0, an and bn are calculated as shown here. However, this formula assumes that the function is defined over 0 to 2L. However, in our case, the function is defined from 0 to twice of pi. Therefore, that means that in our case, L, equal, L equals pi. Yeah? And if we plug that back into this equation, then we get a simplified version for Fourier series. That is, the Fourier series is equal to a naught plus a naught by 2 plus summation over 1 to infinity a n cos n x plus b n sin n x and that's it. And now our job is to find out the values of the different coefficients that is a naught, a n and b n and then we get the Fourier series. So what is a naught? a naught is given like this. So the expressions for a naught, a n and b n will get simplified as well. So instead of 1 over l we have 1 over pi. And then we integrate it from 0 to 2 pi, that is the uh, range over which our function is defined. And then we have the function f of x. So this is equal to 1 over pi integral from 0 to 2 pi x dx, since our function is simply x. And then the integral of x is simply x squared by 2. And then we apply the limits from 0 to 2 pi and we get that a naught is equal to 2 pi. So a naught equals 2 pi is our final value that we get here. Now we try to calculate a n and a n is given by 1 over pi integral from 0 to 2 pi that is the range over which the function is defined f of x multiplied by cos nx dx. Now we write it as 1 over pi is integral over 0 to 2 pi, f of x is simply x and um, cos, cosine of nx dx. Now in order to solve this integral, we will be using the integration by parts, which I will write down over here for your convenience. So whenever we have an integral like integral from a to b of u times v prime dx, the integration by part says that the integral is simply the first function multiplied by the integral of the second function that is v and then we apply the limits from a to b and then we subtract the integral from a to b of the derivative of the first function that is u so we have u prime multiplied by the integral of the second function that is v and that is the integration by parts so if we apply this rule over here then we will say that okay our first function x is u and the second function cos nx is v okay and that means that our integral is equal to 1 over pi then we have the first function as it is that is x multiplied by the integral of the second function that is sine of nx over m then we apply the limits from 0 to 2 pi minus um, minus integral from 0 to 2 pi 
and then we have the derivative of the first function u that is x in our case and the derivative is simply 1 multiplied by the integral of the second function v so uh, or rather v prime this is actually I made a mistake over here this is actually v prime I'm sorry about it I hope you guys can still follow it so anyhow so the integral of the second function v prime is mine uh, is sine nx over n so sine nx over n and then dx and then the curly braces okay so now this implies that our a n is from here we can write it as 1 over pi and instead of the curly braces let me just use the square brackets this time so we have x sine nx or n minus the integral of sine nx is minus cos nx over n so we have minus cos minus minus plus actually so minus cos uh, nx so over n and we already had n, n in the denominator so we have n squared now and that is it and then we apply the limit 0 to 2 pi and now you see that a n is actually equal to 1 over pi then if we put in the limits 2 pi then we have 2 pi sine 2n pi over n plus cos 2n pi or n squared minus 0 minus cos 0 over n squared and now we all know that sine of 2n pi is equal to 0 so we have 0 in the first place then cos of 2n pi is equal to 1 so we have 1 then minus 0 and then cos of 0 is also but sorry there was an n squared also here so yeah so the last term is also 1 over n squared and that means that an is simply equal to 0 and actually you could have predicted that just by looking at the function but I'm not going to tell you how right now I will tell that when we calculate everything and towards the end I will tell you how you could have predicted this but anywho so we have calculated a naught and a n and now we calculate b n that is the weights or the coefficients for the sinusoidal terms so now b n is equal to 1 over pi integral from 0 to 2 pi f of x multiplied by sine n x dx so that means we have 1 over 2 pi integral from 0 to 2 pi x sine nx dx so here again we utilize the integration by parts so we say that uh, okay the first function x is u and the second function sine nx is v prime and then we utilize this formula that we have over here let me just go ahead and copy and paste it over here for your convenience so you don't have to pause and go back okay so let me change the color of the pen back to red okay so now we have bn equal to 1 over pi and utilizing the integration pi parts we have the first function that is x multiplied by the integration of the second function so sine nx um, integrated is minus cos nx over n so we have minus cos nx over n apply the limits from 0 to 2 pi minus integral from 0 to 2 pi and then we have the derivative of the first function that is u prime is actually 1 here and then the uh, integration of the second function v prime that is sine nx and again it is minus cos nx over n so we have minus cos nx over n dx this means dn is equal to let me just use square brackets this time so we have minus x cos nx over n minus or rather plus because of the minus sign inside as well and the integration of cos nx is sin nx over n so we have sin nx over n and we already had an n before so we have n squared and then the limits 0 to 2 pi and now if you plug in the limits you get minus 2 pi cos 2n pi 
over n plus sine 2n pi over n squared minus and minus plus actually but when you plug in x equals 0 then you get 0 and then minus sine of 0 is simply again 0 so now we have 1 over pi minus 2 pi cos 2n pi is actually 1 so we just have uh, n in the denominator now and then sine 2n pi is also equal to 0 and then the remaining terms were already 0 so that means bn is simply equal to minus 2 or n and that is the final value for bn so that means that the Fourier series representing the function f of x can be written as f of x equals a naught by 2 and what is our a naught a naught is twice of pi so that means pi by 2 if we write a naught by 2 let me do one thing let me just copy this formula from here so that in case you have forgotten it by an uh, I cut it by mistake so let me just go ahead and copy this formula for those of you who still haven't memorized it well so we are using this for a series formula right and now we are just plugging back the values of a naught a n and b n that we have evaluated so a naught that we got was um, we got a naught equal to twice of pi so that means ah uh, sorry so that means that the first term would be simply pi and then we have plus and then we have a n equal to zero so we don't have any co cosine terms over here so we have n equals to one to infinity zero and then b n is minus two over n so we have minus two by n sine n x that means f of x looks something like pi minus two sine x plus half of sine 2x plus one third of sine 3x and so on so this is what our function or the Fourier series for our function looks like yeah and now the next task was to um, sketch its graph from minus 4 to 4 pi yeah so let me just go ahead and copy this graph that we already had over here copy it and paste it over here and then what we'll see is that the Fourier series is actually just a periodic um, extension of the function that we already have had so we have the x-axis over here then we have the y-axis over here and what we notice is that the Fourier series is just the periodic extension of this function so we have 4 pi and then similarly on the negative axis also we have 2 pi minus 4 pi and this is what the function looks like yeah? So this is what our Fourier series looks like. It's just a periodic extension of our original function. And coming back to um, when I said that you could have already guessed that the a n um, coefficient would be zero is because if you um, you know slightly displace this periodic curve along the y-axis so that the curve looks something like this so let me go ahead and displace this um, periodic curve along the y-axis so that it we, we, I get something like an odd function so I sorry uh, let me just try to draw an odd function for linear x okay so this looks something like that so if I go ahead and displace the function like this um, okay. and so on yeah okay so I think this is good enough so if I displace this function along the y-axis so that I get an odd function what is an odd function that 
uh, whenever we have f of minus x equal to minus f of x then we can say that we have an odd function so here this condition is fulfilled for the odd function so in my first tutorial I said that whenever you have an odd function you definitely need a sinusoidal uh, series or a Fourier sine series or just a summation of sine functions because sine is also an odd function and you cannot really represent it using cosine functions that is why a n which is the coefficient of the um, cosine functions is equal to zero here because our function is in a way an odd function if you displace it and um, so that is why a n would be zero so for example if you calculate the Fourier series for this function you will get a naught equal to zero a n equal to zero and then b n would be i think um, the same as we got or maybe different i'm not really sure but something like that but a n would definitely be zero here as well as here however in our case a naught was not equal to zero because if you displace this function so what a naught term is acting like the displacement value of our function so we are just displacing our curve along the y-axis and that is why we had a naught equal to pi rather than zero because we have displaced our odd function and therefore the constant term is not zero anymore so um, I hope I haven't confused you guys a lot but uh, just remember that if you have an odd function or an even function then you can uh, you, you, you will have either a n or b n values zero uh, corresponding um, yeah. so that is it i hope you guys enjoyed this video in case you did then don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to my channel for more videos like this if you have any questions then you can leave them in the comment section down below and i'll definitely try to answer them thanks for watching and have a great day